good day everybody welcome back so here's a good question what do you do if you have all the typewriters you would ever need and you don't have any more room at home for typewriters but somebody in your hometown just notified you that they're giving away typewriters what do you do you call your buddy Kevin and you head on over there of course well, we're going to be visiting a local Albuquerque in whom I met a few years ago at one of our earlier type-ins or type-outs at uh, Penny Smith's Papers. Yeah, he uh, emailed me and let me know that he's downsizing his typewriter collection and he's going to be giving away typewriters to whomever would like them. I think I'm really interested, really for curiosity's sake, I'm not in the market necessarily for another typewriter, especially if most of the typewriters he mentioned in his email were full-size standard machines. You know, if there was an ultra portable, I would definitely be more interested. But hey, I'm going to take you guys along and let's see what we find, shall we? Well, we are here in Kevin's car and we're heading over to Craig's house to look at his typewriter collection. Kevin, what are you looking forward to? Well, I'm looking forward to seeing his collection in general, but uh, he had a large collection. It seems like it was even larger than mine, which is, I guess, remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, he's got a couple of interesting items of uh, standard typewriters. <laughs> Oops, mistake. That's, yeah, that's really nice. Yes, that's a nice, that's a nice typewriter. You know, it's funny you mentioned about the the short carriage. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, I have a fondness for that. Type. I, I really do like that. That's one of the yeah, that's one of the I, I do got like that. that. And clutch mechanism is, is seized on that. Probably there we go. Just need to get it to release. Yeah, there. That's how you want it to do, and then that goes in and re-engages it. So it just hasn't been used for a while. Nice though. Yeah, it's, it's a good machine. Yeah. Art Deco trim. Mm. That streamlining look. It seems like it all works. Ooh, good exclamation point! Look at that exclamation point! Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a good machine. Well, you know, a funny thing happened between Idaho Falls and Albuquerque. When we, Kevin and I were up in Idaho Falls back in August, we came across a Olivetti Studio 44 with a really beautiful typeface, and we didn't buy it. Well, Craig's given away this Studio 44, and I'm really seriously considering getting it, but there's only one caveat. The carriage return lever is broken off right there. However, I have been known to do a carriage return with the right hand spin technique. So this might just become the next typewriter in my collection. Okay, so what we're bringing home from this excursion is, um, well, I'll, I'll start with Joe's, because Joe has no room for any more typewriters. That's right. But he's taking one home anyway. So he's got a Studio 44, which this one has a burgundy case, which is different. The other ones we'd seen had an ivory case. Yes. So he's got a Studio 44, what I'm bringing home, which I don't have any more room for typewriters either, too, but we'll have to leave, is a very early 1946 Underwood SS model. Then I'm also bringing a Underwood SX model, which is basically the same machine, but just a little later version. And primarily, this is a much better condition than the one that I have, so I'll be able to make one good machine out of the two. Nice. So, so was it a good haul today? It is, and we actually have a car that will be able to take it, you know. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, we're headed home here, and we had lunch on the way home. So, thinking about this Olivetti Studio 44, it has a broken carriage return lever, and as I indicated earlier, I've actually gotten used to, on some machines like notably the Hermes Rocket that has barely any kind of a carriage return lever at all. And speaking of the early, earlier model version of that, I got used to pulling the carriage back with my right hand 
and twisting the knob and it works just as quickly as using the, the lever itself. And what's interesting is when Kevin and I were up in Idaho Falls back in August, we came across almost an identical Studio 44 in the valise style case at a uh, antique store and it, the same typeface. You might even remember me mentioning in one of those videos that this typewriter had this really interesting typeface that I was really intrigued with. Well, this typewriter has the same typeface. So I'm really interested in, in getting it home and fixing it up and seeing how I get on with it. Keeping in mind, however, that I have had, I think it's five Olivetti's over the years, three letter of 22s, at least two of which badly skipped, and the only way to really fix that is to pull the carriage off so you can get to the escapement mechanism to clean it and degrease it, because the tabulator bar blocks your access to the escapement on those machines. Then I had a Studio 45, the more recent one I've had. It was a pretty blue typewriter, but wasn't very good. Not a good touch to it. It's just real janky feeling. But then I had a Olivetti Underwood 21, which is sort of the later body style of the Studio 44. That was always a good machine. I just never used it much. But here I am with a Studio 44, slightly broken. We'll see how I get on with it this time. Okay, Kevin looks very busy right now. Like, very mentally concentrating. And he is because... He is replacing the ribbon on this, what is it, Underwood SS? Underwood SS from 1946. Oh, yes. And I am getting around the fact of not having a ribbon winder and then not actually just doing it by hand, which is probably easier, that I was going to use the winding mechanism that comes on Underwoods to wind the new ribbon from the Baco spool. All right, so I've got to thread it here, pass the spindle there across through this spindle, come out to this side of the typewriter oh, yes. to the Baco. Yes. So now the idea, I'm holding the toothbrush oh, yes, so that to make it a little angle. You can make it an angle so and that I don't uh, the, unwrap the Baco. And you're spinning the advance knob, and now you're feeding ribbon from the Baco spool onto the spool here on the typewriter. Very yeah. cool. Very cool metal spool that dates yes. with the typewriter. Nice. So Kevin, do you both need and want or just want this these new typewriters? I have to say it's just want. <laughs> I don't need another typewriter. I've got some of the best machines that are made and I've got more than enough choices that I should be able to write something with any of them. But it's more of a want. And again, it's that it's getting that aesthetic feel. Does it feel like, oh, this is the right typewriter to type with? It's well, this is replacing one of your others that you already have. Tell us about that. Well, this is an Underwood SS 1946, which I think is really cool. I need this because this is a first year SS model for Underwood. Right. And you've always got to have the first year. I well, mean, sure. First edition book, first edition typewriter. Right. But the other one that I have that is. The same essential model is the Underwood SX. Oh, yeah. And I am replacing that one with the other machine that we brought in uh, because it's in so much better condition than the one that I already oh, have. Okay. So it is replacing that. Now, in some respects, does this replace the SX? Oh. Because the difference between an SS and an SX is not huge. Right. And this one looks better because yeah. it's black. Yeah, and it has that cool Art Deco trim near the bottom. Yeah, yeah. cool Art Deco trim on it. and It's, it's a, a carryover on a lot of the parts that right. translate. And it's got the short return level, which right. I like. And you better. like the uh, margin settings on the front, right? Yes. Now, the SX had the same thing, too. Right. Because the right. Underwoods were known for the right. margin settings on the front. But then again, do I really need that? No. Sure you do. <laughs> sure, I, sure, sure. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> and as for me, of course I don't need another typewriter, and I really hardly have any more room for typewriters. The case that this comes in is a valise-style case, or is it over there? But it stores kind of vertically rather than laying flat. So that presents its own challenges. 
Uh, yes, thank you, Kevin. Uh, this is the valise style case, right? So you can store it on the bottom here on the end, but you can also store it horizontally, I guess. There are feet on one one of the larger size, sides. But because it's angled, that's wedge shaped, you don't really want to put other machines on top of it because they're angled, right? So you could maybe put it on top of a pile of typewriters, and that might work for me as far as storing. The other issue, of course, it's missing the carriage return lever, which, well, we have it, but it's broken off. But I've been able to type with it because I was used to doing this with my older Hermes rocket that had such a short little carriage return lever, but also the Corona 3, which has that little pinch style carriage return, I've gotten used to just pulling the carriage back with my right hand and twisting the knob to do the line advance. Works fine with this. I, I, it doesn't really slow me down. I do like the um, typeface on this, and the machine has done no skipping, no piling on of letters. The touch is really good. I like the color and the style. Studio 44 is probably one of the best, I think, looking medium-sized portables that Olivetti ever made. And uh, apparently, from the way we interpret the typewriter database, it was made in the year of my birth, 1957. So that's good, right? So. Anyways, I like it, and I'll probably keep it and at least use it for type-ins if people want to try using a typewriter without a carriage return lever, which I think is quite okay for myself. I also wanted to take this time to thank Craig, a local typist here in Albuquerque, who was generous enough to let us come over to his house today and sort through the machines that he was offering to give away, and we came away with three machines. Kevin has two of them, I have one of them. Quite generous. Thank you, Craig. We appreciate it. So I guess the answer for both of us is we don't need them, but we sure like them. And I guess we're going to stick with those answers for that's today. It. That's right. That's our, that's our answer, and we're going to we're, stick with it. We're sticking it. with it, and uh, I'll show you guys this machine more in detail in another video. But until then, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.